Okay everybody, today we are going to talk about the NAND gate, which is the most popular gate out of all the uh, logics, and why it's the most popular. This is the symbol, which the NAND gate is actually short for NOT AND. Okay. Anything has the N in the front is actually inverted. If you see an N in the front, you're going to see this circle here. That just means that the output is actually inverted when it comes out. But we're just going to talk about the NAND gate and why it's the most popular. The reason it's the most popular is because if you're doing a demonstration board, you can create all seven popular logics with a NAND gate the and, NAND, OR, NOR, which is a NOT OR, XOR, which is exclusively OR, XNOR, even the NOT gate or what some people call the inverter, and the unpopular never used buffer which is just a repeater and you can even do a flip-flop clock <clears throat> with a NAND gate alright I'm gonna show you the schematics just using NAND gates how we can do all these other gates and it's great for uh, breadboarding and when you're trying to design something instead of spending so much money buying all the different logics with a couple of NAND gates, which they're very cheap, be it TLL or CMOS, I mean TTL, sorry. Um, it works the same way. One is 5 volt logic, the other one will go higher voltages. <clears throat> so with a NAND gate, we want to do an AND using NAND gates real simply. Here's your NAND gate. Alright, all you got to do is use two of them, put these outputs together like this, and there is your AND gate. Bloop. Done. Of course, we're not going to do the NAND gate because all you have to do is use the chip. We're going to do an OR gate now. How do we do that one? Three NANDs. Here they are. Okay. I'll put here, I'll put here, bridge these, there's your OR gate. Now you want to do a NOR gate, which is a NOT, all you do is put another NAND over here, bridge it, all that does is just inverts it for you. Okay, now we want to make it more complicated. You want to do a XOR. Let's redraw this from scratch. Okay. That's going to take four NAND gates, which is usually the max you'll get on a regular cheap chip. This one's a little bit more trickier. You bridge these. Like this. There's your XOR. Now of course you want to make it uh, an N XOR. Add an inverter. We put another NAND gate here bridge this and there's your NOR NANXOR or however you want to call it an inverter inverter is not hard you already saw me put it on the and at the end of the NAN at the end of the NOR but the inverter which typically looks like this on a schematic would be using a NAND gate would just do our NAND gate. We bridge the two inputs 
and there's your output. What else can you do with the NAND gate? This is getting a little bit more into uh, deeper digital circuitry, but even with the NAND gate, you can create a set reset flip flop using two NAND gates. Alright. Combine that output there. And this would be your Q and your Q1. You're set, reset using NAND gates. That's why it's the most popular of all the gates. When you're designing a circuit, you can buy a couple of these really cheaply. Instead of buying all the other variations, once you design your board, then of course you can shrink it down in chips and stuff. But the NAND gate in the digital world is the king of the logic gates because of its versatility. On the left, I've created a diagram of everything I've shown you. If you'd like to uh, copy that, you're free to use it. Thanks for watching and enjoy. And there's a little flip-flop in the bottom left.